Hi everyone and welcome to part two uh, which is the acrylic paintwork stages on Dragon's 135th scale Stug 4 late version with Dozer Blade. As you can see from this short video all of the acrylic work has now been done and in this episode we'll look at different ways of doing hairspray chipping and also different rust methods. So if you want to know how to achieve this particular look then feel free to pull up a chair and let's do some modelling. First of all I laid down a base primer using a Tamiya Red Oxide and uh, never lets me down and very pleased with the finish. However when I cleaned uh, the model before putting the primer down I didn't realise that some of the water had got inside the stug and after I'd laid down the primer I realised there had been some contamination with water droplets as you can see here. Not a problem uh, as this was uh, just touched up and I was able to proceed to the next stage. And what I used here now was to do some uh, chipping with the sponge. Uh, so I used Vallejo's Metal Colour Burnt Iron and basically added it to the areas uh, that were predominantly going to be chipped, which is obviously on the edges and areas of uh, wear and tear, and obviously on the actual uh, metal plates uh, at the front there as well. A few scratches were added here and there and onto the railings and onto the rear exhausts as well. Once that was done I got some Vallejo uh, Cam Black Brown and then just using the sponge just did some extra sponge chipping just to break up the monotony and to also when doing the hairspray chipping all of that particular sponge work would come through nicely. Now I wanted to add a bit of colour to the stug uh, so there would be examples of where um, other parts of stugs were having to be used due to shortness uh, of materials um, so there was no need to actually mask off these areas however the amount of uh, paint being laid down I thought it would be a, an ideal thing to do so once the hairspray had been added um, I used different red tones so for the lower hull I used Vallejo's Brown RLM For all of the uh, side areas I used uh, flat red which is model colour so that was thinned down with Vallejo thinner and then finally all of the top areas were using Ferrari red. And then once uh, that I'd left that to dry for an hour um, it was a matter of uh, using a uh, cut down old brush and using some water and it was a matter of just spending a couple of hours going around the whole of the uh, model and doing all of the chipping. And I was really pleased with how it had turned out. It was a lot better than what I expected. All of the uh, metal and uh, cam black brown was coming through nicely as chips underneath. Not too overstated. And as you can see here are the areas that were masked off and they'll now be ready uh, for the uh, green and yellow colours that I'll add later on. And here are some uh, stills to show you some uh, chips closer up. The rear mud guards came out particularly well. I was very well pleased with how that, that chipping went. So the whole tank was now uh, masked over and uh, I used tan yellow uh, for the uh, Dunkel Gale berries and uh, Panzer Olive for the green areas. And obviously hairspray had already been uh, laid down on the whole of the model so it was quite straightforward to then go ahead and do some chipping. And as you can see from these photos it's come out quite well. Um, when I actually chipped onto the Tamiya primer it was a slightly different reaction but again very pleased with how that's come out. And here we have some close ups. Now there's some research photos that actually show that in the factories um, the Germans would either use chalk or white paint to uh, show areas where they were actually going to be putting 
the different parts of the tanks together so I thought that would be a, a, a nice feature to add to the stug so there were a couple of lines at the front and some on the side as well and also one going along the back uh, I used a slightly off-white color which was insignia white again areas were masked off and because of the hairspray that was already on there it was very straightforward to go ahead and chip because I wanted to try and get it as faded as possible and uh, with all the scratches already on there from previous chipping it came out really well there's also on one of the research photos a small number on the front there and I decided to replicate that 143 means nothing at all it's just numbers that were in my head at the time and uh, they were chipped accordingly so next what I wanted to do was to do the uh, rust areas on the front uh, I'm going to be showing you how to use it with a brush as well as sponge method so the ones we're going to be using all for Leho with the dark rust orange brown light rust yellowish rust orange rust and ordinary rust itself and then once fully dry uh, the whole lot would be blended in using a wash of smoke obviously a palette and some sponge and a dish of water as well for the brushwork so first of all we're going to look at uh, the dark rust just getting a little piece of sponge wetting it in the water and then damming it down trying to take uh, as much off as possible and what we're trying to do here is to create because of the wetness some air bubbles on the surface because that will uh, create the texture that you're after in the rust look and as you can see that's come out quite well once you've used sponge for each color throw it away now we're going to do the same color but this time we're going to use brushes so loading up the brush into sort of like a wash consistency then add that in a haphazard way because again what you're trying to produce is different uh, tones with this color And then once that's done just add a few little dots and dabs here again to add a little bit of uh, texture and there we go you can see at the top there where it's all dried out and at the bottom they're still to dry but some nice tonal work coming in there so now we move on to the next color uh, which is rust itself again same method trying to get those bubbles there we go that's come up really well and then using the brush on the lower area we use the same technique with the wash and creating that tonal look just by dabbing it all over the particular area there we go this is the sort of look that you're after so again once dry you can see we've got some nice tones and texture coming up there so we move on to the next color which was light rust and again exactly the same procedure as before and similarly with the brush as well So, so far very pleased the way it came it was going now with the lighter colors we need to be a little bit more precise so here with the orange brown we're actually just going to dab in and around patches um, on there rather than the whole area itself just to give different uh, color variations in the different areas and similarly with the brush as well no need to cover the whole area just do little areas just to highlight the orange brown areas now next with the uh, yellow rust we're actually going to apply it in specific areas with the brush and then get the sponge 
and just blend that in and just do that in three or four different areas on the actual panel itself and similarly with the brushed section just do small areas with the yellow rust and just try and envisage where you think the rust will be I felt that it would be all the way along the world seam so I added it to there now with the uh, orange rust uh, we're going to do exactly the same process just in different specific areas and blend it out using the sponge and again this is a nice color uh, to put on it on any particular joins or areas uh, specifically around the world seems and finally again using the brush same method on the uh, brushed panel now once this was all dry it was a matter of getting a wash of smoke and covering both the areas try and get it fairly even and then it's just a matter of leaving it to dry and this way the smoke just blends all of those colors in together to create the final look and there we have it as you can see there is a distinct difference uh, between using a sponge and between using a brush and whichever you feel is the best look for your model then hopefully this will help you achieve some nice rust tones on your next build. So as you can see the same methods were used on the suspension at the bottom. The other panels were also done with the rust. The railings and also the rear exhausts as well. But please remember these are just the base coats still more work will be done with the oils uh, when we get to that stage in the weathering process all of the white chipping was done really pleased with how that came out and uh, once all weathered that's certainly going to be a nice feature on this particular model and here are some close-up stills of the rust work <coughs> So the dozer blade um, was primed this time in brown oxide and that was ammo's one shot and then airbrushed on the burnt iron and then airbrushed the center areas with steel just to have a little bit of different tone and then the rust work was done um, using the airbrush and again the wheels were processed in the same way as the bodywork done and as you can see here with the hairspray chipping uh, the wheels came out really well very pleased with the way the sprockets turned out and obviously the rear idlers with the wear and tear on the tracks as well as the chipping as well the actual wheels themselves I used um, two different shades of red and also I added in some uh, yellow and green ones as well just to uh, show again um, using wheels from other different vehicles because of the shortness at the particular time of the war now as far as tires go um, I know people have their different ways I personally prefer to uh, hand paint them what I do is I get a uh, heavy wash of uh, black acrylic and as you can see they're using capil capillary action just allow that to go around the rim and then once that's dry you now have a nice edge uh, to which to actually paint the tires up to and this will stop you from going um, over the rim I personally like to use a uh, dark rubber uh, for painting my tires with 
Um, quite a few tyres on this particular build, uh, but again, I find it uh, quite a nice exercise hand painting uh, the wheels. So hopefully that little tip will, will make uh, life a little bit easier for you when painting your tank wheels. And there we have it, nice and clean round tyres. Now again the sprocket, that needed some extra work done, uh, so using the burnt iron uh, just to facilitate the wear and tear on the teeth. Obviously have to do both sides, the top and both edges as well. And there we have it. Very pleased with how that those were turning out. Always remember that the back of the wheels will be seen. Um, so always treat them just as much as you would do the fronts. So there we have it. Uh, one full set of wheels. Um, as you can see here, uh, we've got some nice tyre marks there which will come up well when we do the oils and we have a nice variation of colour as well on them so there we have it um, very pleased with uh, the way all the acrylic work has gone as for the detailed painting don't forget your bump stops either black or dark rubber uh, the strips here are where the um, dozer blades going to sit I took the masking tape off because I was concerned that uh, the matte varnish may glue them to the actual uh, tank themselves. So they've been taken off. And just a matter of going around highlighting, the world seems to be quite bright because they're all toned down. The fire extinguisher belts were done red leather and uh, silver. The springs as well. Now the, the rear light, uh, when it's turned off, it is, is a black tube. Uh, when it's turned on, uh, there'll be a green light. I uh, haven't decided whether I'll bother with that at the moment, so I've just put a black glaze on. All the railings have all been done. Hopefully they won't keep splitting, uh, but at the moment they're still stuck together nicely. The actual vent panels, I uh, did those a different shade of red, because um, obviously a bit dirty and grimy, so that will all be weathered up as well. But all in all, really pleased with the different tones and colours and looking forward to uh, doing some uh, oil work on that to make it nice and weathered. Dozer blade, again, uh, as I said before, I actually used airbrush here uh, to create all the different uh, rust tones. Um, not too fussed with the way it looks at the moment because it is going to get covered in pigment uh, with mud and dust and brick dust. Uh, but at least there's a nice base there for me to, to, to work from. So that just leaves me to say thank you once again very much for popping in and having a look at uh, this episode of The Build. I'd like to put a big thank you out to all of my subscribers. I uh, really appreciate all your continued support of my work. And for anyone else who's popped in to have a look, Feel free to copy any of the things that you've been uh, seen on this video um, and hopefully it will enable you to enhance your own models. So it just leaves me to say thanks once again and happy modelling.